Well, hey folks, it's John with Ozarks Backroads with you. We're here in the Ozarks Backroads World Headquarters garage today. Uh, winter has set in on us here in the Ozarks. It's pretty cold outside, so we're going to start in on some of our uh, winter maintenance here. So we're going to start with this Triumph Tiger. We've got a set of WP forks on the front of this thing. So KTM owns WP. So you find these WP forks on a lot of the KTMs, the 790s and 890s in particular, have these separate function uh, forks on them. Same as the, the forks here on this Tiger. And we've got about uh, 16 or 17,000 miles on this bike now. It's probably time to go ahead and uh, take the forks apart, clean them all out, uh, put new bushings and seals in them and then uh, new fluid. The fluid's gonna be pretty nasty in there. Get these things back working like they should be. I also have several other videos uh, on servicing on the Triumph Tiger. This is the 2019 model, uh, the XCX model here, but they're all pretty similar. I've got uh, swing arm bearing and uh, drag link bearing service, as well as steering head bearing uh, service in those bearings. And then, of course, uh, thr uh, throttle body synchronization and valve gap uh, checks, uh, cam timing, and all that stuff on the engine. If you're interested in any uh, videos uh, about any other servicing on the Tiger, I'll put links to all those in the description below. Stick around. We'll tear into these WP forks and see what we can do with them. First thing we've got to do today is uh, we've got to get our front wheel off here. And um, we also need to get our fender off, our calipers, of course, to get the wheel off. And then uh, any attachments on the lines to the forks need to come loose so the forks are uh, nothing on them. We can get them out. I'm ready to pull my fork out. I've got the wheel off, the fender off, and everything uh, off of the forks down there. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, is loosen up these uh, top pinch bolts here on the triple tree on top. So I've got those loose. And before I uh, uh, loosen the lower ones and pull the fork out, while the lower ones are still tight, I wanna loosen my cap up here because it's, it's probably gonna be hard to hold it and loosen it uh, uh, later if I take it out. So I'll, uh, I'll just crack it loose now and uh, I won't have to deal with that. Before I loosen the cap, I want to go ahead on my adjuster and back it all the way out counterclockwise. And I want to count uh, how many clicks so I'll know where to put it when I, when I go back together. So there's one, two, three. Looks like 10 clicks. So I'm going to leave it all the way out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can loosen this cap. It shouldn't be tied. It's got an O-ring for a seal. Oh yeah, it came right loose. Okay, so it's loose. I'm gonna leave it on there. I don't want to uh, spill fluid, but I can get it off now. So now I will uh, loosen up the pinch bolts on the lower, uh, the second, the lower triple tree down here. We should be able to just uh, give that a little twist and and our fork will just drop right out of there. All right, we've got our fork out. I've kind of got it propped up here against the bench. We need to get the cap off the top here where the adjuster's at. I loosened this up before uh, I uh, took it out of the triple tree there on the bike, so it's loose. I don't have to break it loose now. I can just screw it off of here. I've got that cap loose. Now my fork leg will slide down the, uh, the leg will slide down over the tube now. I'm going to drop that all the way to the bottom. We got to get the cap off the top of this stem. You see there's a nut uh, underneath here and then the cap. So to do that, we hold the nut underneath, take another wrench, and <clears throat> release the cap and then go ahead and screw the cap off. We've got our cap off and if you look in there you'll see the little pin that runs it runs inside this rod 
And that's what adjusts the, uh, the dampening here in this, the height of this. When you, when you unscrew it, it lets the rod come up and lets more oil come through the cartridge. When you screw this down, it pushes down on this farther and allows less oil to come up through the cartridge under compression or rebound, whichever uh, unit you're on here. Which, uh, these are separate function forks. This fork does rebound. We've got an O-ring here on the cap that seals it. Uh, it seals against the inside of the tube in here. So we need to make sure that O-ring's in good shape. If, it, if it's uh, torn or nicked or something, why? Probably need to get a new O-ring. We've got a rod, our uh, adjustment rod here, our damper adjustment rod. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. So now we need to release the uh, spring guide here, this plastic shield. And to do that, we just push down on it so that there's a gap here between this nut and just take this nut off. And we've got a washer that sits on top of that. So now our uh, our guide will come out and you'll notice there's a couple of spacers on the top of this. I'm going to leave them in place so I don't, uh, I don't lose them. And I'm laying everything out on the table here in, in the order that they came off. We need to go ahead and pull our spring out. This is not a uh, variable rate spring. The, the, you see the coils are wound the same distance all the way from top to bottom. And both ends look the same to me the way that the, uh, the coil is ground flush there at the last turn. Same on this end. I don't think it matters which way that goes in, but I'll keep it in uh, the same orientation here and lay it out here on my table. Before I dump this oil, I need to know for sure how much oil it takes is, is full. So when I reload this with oil, I get the right amount in it. And the way you do that is you drop the tube, you push the tube all the way down over the the uh, the leg of the fork so they're compressed together. I've got the spring and the spring guide out. So all that's in here is the two tubes in the cartridge right now. So I've got that pushed all the way down. The book that I have says it should be about four inches or about a hundred millimeters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check it with a tape measure, and that's to the top of the tube right here, the, the very top edge of the tube. So I'm gonna run this down in here. I have oil at about five and three quarter inches. So either the book's wrong or it's not filled properly. And it does, it's a way down in there. It does look like it's not quite full. I'm gonna record that five and three quarters inches from the top is where I'm at. My manual also gives me, tells me how many milliliters of oil this is supposed to hold. So I've got an empty uh, bottle here of, uh, what is it, a motor oil. I've drained it overnight, uh, upside down. It's nice and dry. I'm gonna let the, dump my oil into this and then uh, let it uh, sit upside down for an hour or so and really drain out good. And then it's got, uh, markings here to tell me how many milliliters is in this. So we'll check it that way and see how much oil is actually in this tube. In the end of this cartridge, if I lift that up, this rod, and push it down, you will see a little pink um, valve. It's a little aluminum valve with an O-ring on it. Is, in, is sitting in the end of this uh, tube. I'm gonna take that out so I don't lose it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dump this. And that fluid actually looks pretty good. I'm impressed. I figured it'd be pretty nasty, have a bunch of uh, bushing, uh, you know, that black, the bushings will turn the oil black. I've also got a spacer that has just come out it, that the spring was sitting on, on top of the cartridge. So I'm gonna put that over here in the uh, end of the spring on the table. So I'm gonna set this upside down, just let it stand upside down and prop it up and just let it sit for about an hour. So I drained my fork leg overnight upside down into this uh, used oil jug that I cleaned out. 
and I, I can see that I got almost 500 milliliters out of that leg. The 500 mark is up here, it's down just a little bit. So I would say when I fill this, probably 500 milliliters will put it right back where it was. So we're gonna go ahead and separate our uh, tube from our out inner tube from our outer tube so we can replace the, um, the bushings and the seals in here. So the first thing I need to do is get this dust seal pried loose and uh, slide it up off of the, the outer tube. So I'm gonna use a little putty knife that I've got that I've sharpened up pretty sharp on the end. And uh, I want to be real careful and not slip and get onto this tube. I don't want to damage this, uh, any nicks or scratches on this tube. But right here where the seal, the dust seal sits on top of the tube, I'm just going to press that in there and uh, just pry it up a little bit. Kind of go around this. And you can see it's starting to come out there. I'm going to go ahead and take a screwdriver and ease it in there and just give it a little pry and then it'll just come right off. It's not, a, it's not in there real tight, so that's pretty simple. So we'll just slide this uh, seal up here out of the way for now. On top of the oil seal, there's a little retaining ring and it's gonna be very difficult to see. Um, right in here is where it's at. So I'm gonna use this little pick that I've got. It's just a little hook. Work it in behind it and pull it up out of the groove on the end. Okay, there it is. So I was able to grab it and now I've got it pulled up out of the groove right here. I've got my screwdriver under it. I can just work around it now with the screwdriver and just pop that right out. It just flew out of there. So that is the retaining ring that holds the, the oil seal down in place and keeps it from getting pushed out by oil pressure. So we'll slide that up to the end. The next thing we're going to do is slide hammer uh, the, the two tubes apart. The lower bushing will grab the upper bushing right here in the top of this uh, outer tube and it will impact it and bring it out and then the, the whole leg the whole inner tube will separate from the lower tube. You can hear it there hitting the upper bushing. We'll just kind of, and it doesn't take much. Those aren't driven in super, super tight. You can see the oil seal right here that the, uh, the snap ring was on top of the oil seal here holding it in place. There's a little groove in this outer tube that this, uh, the snap ring snaps into and, and holds it in place, so it holds the oil seal down. So we've got the oil seal, we've got a washer that sits on top of this upper bushing that we just drove out. This is the bushing that goes in the top of the outer tube over here. We just drove that out by pulling up on this tube and it was catching on this lower bushing right here and it, drove, it pulled it out of the tube. So we'll slide all of that up. So to get everything off, the only thing we need to have left to do here to disassemble this leg is to remove this lower bushing on the end of the tube and it fits down in a, in a recess that's machined into the tube and you can see there's a, a gap right here in the bushing. I'm just gonna put a screwdriver in there and gently pry that open and work that over the uh, over the tube out of its little recess and that's my lower bushing right there the next thing i'm going to do is remove all of the the the, uh, the other bushing the washer for the bushing right here above it the oil seal right here then there's the snap ring that holds the oil seal down, and then the dust seal. I'm gonna remove all these and be very careful to keep them in order so that I know how they all go back on and also the direction that the oil seal fits. I can see that there's a spring on the outside of the oil seal right here. You can see that little spring on the lip, and that points towards the uh, bottom of the tube. 
away from the oil. The oil is on this side down here coming up and that spring faces away from the oil towards the uh, leg end, the leg end of the tube down here. So I need to know that when I put my new seal on. To get the seal on upside down, it's not going to seal and you're going to leak oil. Slide all that right off of the tube. So I'll slide all of the, uh, the bushings and the seals off and put them in order here so I know how they go back on when I go to put this back together and also the, the orientation of the oil seal. Now you can at this point remove the cartridge and bring it up, uh, bring the whole cartridge out. It's got a bolt in the end, a single bolt right in the end that you remove and then the whole cartridge will come out. But if you do that, you need to order a new copper washer that goes under that bolt that holds that cartridge down so it will seal. I don't have any. And as clean as this oil was, I was really surprised how clean uh, this, uh, the oil was in here. It was very clear. I'm not gonna remove the cartridge in these. I, don't, I really don't see the point in it. Uh, by blowing into the cartridge through the, the top uh, rod, it's hollow and goes all the way right into the cartridge. I can get all the uh, oil out of that cartridge and then let it drain and blow it dry with, uh, with the air hose and it'll be just as good as removing it and cleaning it. We'll get this stuff cleaned up and then we'll reassemble this fork. Well, we've got our uh, tubes all cleaned up and our cartridge uh, cleaned out, blowed out and dried. We're ready to start reassembling here. So we're gonna take a look at the parts we're gonna use and the tools we're gonna use uh, to do this. And there's not a whole lot to it. We've got uh, a set of bushings. This is a kit uh, to do the, both forks. It's got two upper and two lower bushings with it. And uh, the part number here, the Triumph part number would be a, a 2041739. You can look at the part number right here. So that'll get you the kit to do both forks on the bushings. And then I've got a set of seals to do uh, seal. Uh, it's got the oil seal and the dust seal for both forks. So this is a kit to do both forks. This is made by WP. Uh, it's got the uh, KTM part number and it's got the Triumph part number. Uh, remember, uh, WP is owned by KTM, so uh, this will be uh, OEM for KTM and Triumph in this application. And the Triumph part number is the, uh, uh, the T2041738 part number right here. So that's the, the, the seals and the bushings that we're going to use. We also need a bushing driver to do this job. I've got a uh, one here I bought off of Amazon, a 43 millimeter bushing driver. It's a two piece affair, comes apart. And uh, you, you need to have a two piece driver because we've got a, uh, a foot on the end of this uh, tube here. So we're going to need to have a uh, a two-piece driver we can take apart and slip over the tube and then put it back together on the tube the other thing we can also use this to to drive our seal when we get our new seal out of the package to put it in it fits perfectly on the edge right here of this driver so we'll use this tool to to set our bushing and our seal in our uh, outer fork tube. Well, right here we've got our fork tube that we're fixing to load our, uh, our components onto so we can reassemble this. But up here at the end where, where the, uh, the, the bushing sits in this groove, these edges are sharp right here where this is machined out. We've got to slide our new seals over this and down onto our tube. We don't want the lip on our dust or oil seal to catch on these. 
So we're gonna, I've, uh, I've cleaned this off with alcohol and got it nice and dry and clean. And I'm gonna take a little bit of electrical tape. This is just vinyl uh, electrical tape. I'm gonna make one circle around the groove here with this tape on this tube. Like that. And make a pass around the other edge here. Get both edges covered with tape. We've got the end of our tube taped up here and we're ready to load all of our, uh, our uh, seals and uh, parts onto this tube and get, put this thing back together. I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, fork oil on this tape and oil this tape, get it nice and oily, and a little bit down here on this tube wouldn't hurt a thing either. Kind of get a little oil on that. Then uh, the first thing we're going to put on, which is on the uh, opposite of the order that we took it apart here, is our new uh, dust seal. We got the, the new dust seal they sent us. I'm going to put uh, a little oil in that where it seals. The spring on the dust seal, you see that? That goes towards the foot, the outside. It doesn't go inside, it goes outside. So we'll slide this on here. We'll get that on there and just slide it over and that tape will keep those edges on these groove from catching our seal. As it goes on, we'll slide this up all the way. The next thing is our retainer. We got a new one, a new uh, re uh, retainer clip came with our seals. That goes on. This is this will hold the oil seal down. And then the next thing will be the oil seal itself. Again, we're gonna oil this thing, the lip of it. A little bit of fork oil here. Get a little bit back on here. It goes on with the spring towards the foot, away from the, uh, the oil inside the tube here. The foot's down here, so we're gonna point the spring towards the foot. And slide it over our tape, nice and easy. We'll run that down. We got a new washer that sits on top of our bushing. This came with the seals as well. I don't know why you need a new one, but we got a new one. Put that on. That sits on top of the bushing that washer does in between the bushing and the seal. And then lastly, we got our new bushing they sent us for the, the uh, lower bushing that we're going to drive into the tube. Put a little oil on that, put it on here. Okay, so we've got everything loaded up here on our, on our uh, tube in the order that they go. We got the dust seal, retainer clip, oil seal, and both the oil and dust seal have the spring pointing towards the foot down here. The spring you can see from the outside. Then we got our, our new washer and our, uh, the thin or the narrow uh, bushing. We got this tape on here. We don't need this tape anymore. We need to put our bushing on. I'm gonna wipe that off the little alcohol, get the, uh, the glue off of that tape. There might be some glue there. We'll get that wiped off. And then the last piece of the puzzle is our new uh, upper or lower bushing here that they sent us. Uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of oil where this bushing sets. I'll have to spread this apart just a little bit to get it started. And then it'll snap right in that groove. Like that. Then I'm going to put a little oil on the outside of this bushing as well. So now this tube slides down back down into our outer tube, the inner tube here, into the outer tube. Uh, not the threaded end where the cap goes up here, but on the bottom of the fork tube. That's where we're putting this in at. I'm gonna put a little oil in this. 
kind of run it down and around and try to get some oil in it best as I can. And then we'll slide the inner tube into the outer. So we've got the, the, the upper bushing is in there now. Here is our lower bushing. We need to set the lower bushing, drive it into the tube. To drive this bushing into place, into its seat right here, you can kind of see out here where it sets. There's a ledge in there for it. I've got my bushing started. It's down in here, it's just sitting there. And then my seals and, and retainer are up here. The new washer that we put on right here, I'm gonna let it drop down on top of that bushing. And that's gonna protect my bushing when I drive it into its seat. So now I will take my bushing driver, put it together over my tube, and set it down on my bushing. And then I'm just gonna slide hammer the bushing down into place with the driver. And you'll hear it get hard there when it hits the bottom of the seat. And the, uh, the washer that we laid on top of the bushing protects it from getting damaged to set it when we're driving it down. So we've got it all the way down there. And that's what this tool is for. The next piece to go in here is our seal. This is the actual seal. And again, our bushing tool is made to sit right on the edge of that, uh, of this uh, seal and not damage it. So I'm gonna put this together on top of the seal. And usually on these seals, you can just push them down. I'll try. I believe it went. Take a look here. I believe it pushed into place. We should be able to see the groove that this, this retainer ring, we should be able to see the groove above that seal that this retainer ring snaps into. If I can't see the groove above the seal that I just pushed down, then it's not down far enough. It's got to be showing so that this snap ring right here can snap into the groove. So the groove is visible above the, uh, the seal right here. I can take my tool and uh, catch it. I can see it. I don't know if the camera, if we can see that in there or not. It's pretty dark, but the groove is visible and it's important that I verify that before I try to put this snap ring in here. If, if there's, the groove isn't visible, if I can't catch that with my tool, then it's not going to snap in there. So I just need to start one end and work it around and push the other end in until the whole, uh, the whole uh, snap ring is in there. And then we should be able to just push it down. Yep, you can hear it click and snap into place. And then I've got it, it's in place. I can see that that is uh, snapped into place all the way around there. So we're good there, our seal's not gonna get out on us. So the last piece of the pie here of the puzzle is our uh, seal, our dust seal. It just presses in the end of the tube right here. And uh, you can actually just take the leg and push it down and press that seal right into place. And you can see there, the seal's down against the, the lip of the tube. There's no gap between the edge of the seal and the tube. It's all the way down. We've got to put the valving back in this, and it's, it's kind of a critical part here. The, the valving consists of this long rod that we pulled out uh, underneath the cap when we took the cap off. On the end of this rod, down in at the bottom of this shaft, it's in the cartridge, is this little valve, this little pink valve that came out when we dumped our oil. There's also a little spring that's underneath this. This little pin sits on this spring. So the spring will go in first and then the, 
the valve goes in in the spring and then the rod goes on the valve like this and this all goes down in this shaft. I'm going to leave all this mounted up on our rod just like we loaded it and I'm going to insert it into this shaft and push it all the way to the bottom. And slide that in. So when it's installed all the way our rod should be sticking up above the end of this shaft just a little bit. And if I lift the rod out, it doesn't want to go all the way down. It's because it's not down over the little pin, over the little uh, valve all the way. I can wiggle this around and it'll drop down on top of it like it should be there. So that's how that needs to be installed. Our next move or thing we need to do is to load this up with oil. I'm going to use this Motul fork oil. It's five weight. My application here uh, actually calls for four weight, but I couldn't find any uh, four weight fork oil. Um, I suppose you could probably get it from Triumph or uh, KTM. I did find five weight. It's uh, full synthetic. It should be really good oil. And I may just have to back off a click or two on my dampening settings. I don't know if it'll make that much difference or not, but it should be pretty close. I've determined that I'm going to put uh, half a liter in there, 500 milliliters. So I'm just going to pour that right into the, uh, into the tube. I'm going to pour it down the, the uh, end of the cartridge as well, into that uh, rod, the hollow end of that rod. I've loaded up 500 milliliters of oil. After I loaded the oil, you want to pump the cartridge, the cartridge rod here, up and down to get all the air out of this and be sure and cover the end up here when you push it down or it'll shoot fluid out the top of that. But I've been pumping it and I'm not hearing any more air escaping down there. So I've got all the air out of it. So at this point I can measure my depth, which I did with my uh, tape measure. I ran it down in there and I've got about four and a half inches, which is real close to what my manual said the, the level should be four and a half inches from the top right here. All right, so we've got our oil in here. We've measured it. We've got the correct depth. Uh, the oil is sitting at the correct level here, about four and a half inches. Half a liter is what we put in there. We're gonna go ahead and finish this thing up. Uh, the next thing we'll put in, there's this little sleeve that the bottom of the, sp of the spring sets on. It goes on first, it goes on top of the cartridge. We'll run that down in there, and then we can set our spring on there. We'll raise this all the way up. Drop our spring down. We've got the uh, sleeve, the uh, spring guide, they call it, with its cup, with its two little spacers at the top up here. Make sure we don't forget those. Put those on. Pull that back up like that. All right, so we've got our cartridge rod run up through. We've got a sleeve that the spring sits on. We've got our spring. We've got our spring guide and our two spacers. The next thing that goes on is the washer and then the nut on the top of this cartridge. And we run that nut down all the way with our hand, just finger to the bottom of the threads you can see it going down there. Like a yay. Okay. We've ran our nut down. You just press down on the spring and then run this nut all the way down on top of this, uh, this washer, on top of this uh, uh, spring guide. Run it all the way to the end of the thread. We've got our uh, top cap now. You want to take a look at the O-ring on it and make sure it's not nicked or torn. That's what seals uh, the oil there in the top, so we don't want any leaks. We want to oil this uh, O-ring on this cap, put a little fork oil on that so it doesn't grab going down and it seats properly in the tube. 
start threading this on and we run it all the way down until it's sitting on top of this jam nut right here. And then we'll take our two wrenches, put one on the jam nut, the other on the cap right here on top, and we're just going to jam these two together, just lock them together. It doesn't need a whole lot, just that's probably plenty, right, like that. So now they're jammed together. So when we turn this upper cap now, it's turning the rod and everything down in the cart, the rod out of the cartridge, the, the shaft, it's turning all of it. All right, so now all we do is we lift up the outer tube to join up with this cap and screw the cap in as we lift on the outer tube. And then we can run it down to the bottom there with our, our wrench. And then I'll give that a little, after I get this mounted back up in the uh, triple trees and get the lower clamp tight, I'll tighten this up a little bit and just cinch it. It doesn't need a whole lot. The O-ring does the sealing. Tightening this down super tight is not going to make it seal any better. Well, I've uh, slid my uh, fork back up in here and uh, set it where I want it with the cap just above the uh, triple tree. I'm going to run these just a little, a uh, little extended, about a quarter of an inch or so. And then uh, the pinch bolts here, about 17 foot pounds or uh, I don't know, 20 or 22 Newton meters of torque. So we'll torque these up. Uh, when we get it where we want it here and uh, we just go back and forth on these until uh, they both hit the torque setting and stay and uh, that's pretty much it i've done the bottom ones already the lower ones so that kind of wraps up the front fork rebuild uh, we'll do the other side just rinse and repeat and uh, we'll have that little job done well folks i appreciate you all hanging out with me uh, rebuilding the front forks here on the Mighty Tiger. I hope you got something out of that. If you need to see uh, videos on other maintenance items on the Tiger or the V-Strom, I've got a bunch of those. I'll put links for those videos in the description below. I appreciate you all hanging out with me. I invite you to come back and see me. We'll go somewhere or do something else. Till I catch up with you again, you all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.